I'm Jason Harmon, and this is API Intersection, where you'll get insights from experienced API practitioners to learn best practices on things like API design, governance, identity auth, versioning, and more. Welcome back to API Intersection Podcast. Uh, we have uh, totally a, one of these wheelhouse discussions today, right? Uh, the thing we've done most is look at, you know, um, kind of what are what are API programs and kind of the, the machinery behind it, uh, what does all that look like? And uh, today's guest, Ikenna, from 10x Future Technologies, uh, kind of coming from the banking world a bit, but... Um, He's a product owner, which you know we love. API product people—they're they're, they're uh, a, a rare breed these days. So, Ikenna, thanks for joining, and uh, Anna, my co-host here. Um, Ikenna, tell us a little bit more about yourself and kind of what 10x does, uh, and then we'll we'll get into it. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Anna. Uh, yeah, like uh, Jason said, my name is Ikenna. We will, I'm the uh, uh, you know product on our uh, API product on our 10x. Um, so 10x is a kind of a global SaaS company, uh, and we build the product called the 10x Supercore platform. It's a product we build for, for our clients who are banks, and it's it's really to help make banking better for our, uh, for, for, for their customers, for our clients, and, and really for, well, for the world, really. But the goal of the platform, it's a kind of cloud-based platform that, that really helps to make, uh, helps our clients build product to market uh, 10 times faster uh, and, and, at, and at a much lower cost to, to what they have. So that's, that's kind of, um, that's what we bring uh, to the market. Um, and uh, in terms of my role there as an API product owner, I, I kind of help oversee our API platform team, uh, our team, the team we have, which kind of oversees our, API Gateway, but also um, oversees kind of API governance standards, uh, help optimize our API development workflow. And also we, I help facilitate the internal community of practice we have around APIs, uh, which we call our API Guild. Yeah. You're, you're our quite, people, uh, Ikenna. You're our people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's, it's quite bold, right, to call your company 10X because you can deliver 10X the speed. Uh, yeah. I'd love to hear where that came from. Did, where'd that number come from? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's aspiration. Yeah, that's what we want to do. Aspiration. All right, good. It's bold. <laughs> so, well, it, it, we've certainly seen um, you know plenty of trends around kind of fintech in general investing in APIs. So, um, how, how long has 10x been around, and uh, have you, I guess, been around long enough to have seen the bump from the last couple of years? I assume. Yeah, we've been around for about five years. Um, yeah. But I joined the company. Um, I think it's been eighteen months plus now. Okay. Yeah. So you've been there long enough to be disillusioned a little, so you're going to give us some dirt, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the trajectory is, uh, I like to say it's been uh, a lot better since I joined, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the idea. No, I just mean, you know, everybody loves stories of failure too, right? Uh, none of us really know what to do. We just know a lot of what not to do. <laughs> um so, you know, we were kind of chatting before and it certainly seems like, you know, uh, what your kind of job here is, is this, this idea of kind of the, the whole life cycle of an API and kind of the workflow that happens behind it. Um, and you kind of use, uh, thrown around this term of API ops, which, you know, I feel like it's like API first or anything else. Everybody has their own definition. So I'm mm -hmm. going to throw your label away for a second. <laughs> but uh, tell us what you mean when you're you're kind of talking about API ops. Yeah, that, that's a good good point, Jason. Because I think when we look at it, you know, we've had a DevOps movement, and from there, there's been a lot of you know, it's the next, it's the next uh, term that's come out. So there's been a lot of ops related uh, buzzwords come out. You know, there's there's biz DevOps, DevSecOps, everything ops, just just coming out. And Sales so, um, ops. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right. And and I've um, but I'm really been interested in this idea of of API ops because when we look at it and look at what you know when we start with what's DevOps about, right? Uh, and we see that you know at its kind of heart, at its core, like I see DevOps as really applying lean principles to the to to the software development work stream, right? And trying to optimize that. So optimizing the flow of value to the client, uh, to the customer, but also getting feedback along the way. You know whether that, that's through metrics or through different ways, getting feedback to further optimize that process. But also about you know 
putting safety, building cultures that incorporate safety, that incorporate continuous improvement, that incom- incorporate uh, experimentation to help drive cultures that, are in, that you know, innovate. So that's really, for me, what DevOps is about. Um, and then from there, when we talk of API ops, it's, for me, it's about applying those same principles, those same DevOps principles to APIs. So when you look at an API delivery, you know, an API value stream, how value is delivered around our API changes, whether that's starting, you know, obviously that stands with, um, you know, understanding some value that needs to be delivered via an API, and then going through to the actual API design, building the API, testing the API, documenting and publishing the API, and then supporting the API. And sometimes, you know, you, you'd also get to deprecating that API and sunsetting that API. You know, how is value delivered across that whole value stream? And how can you optimize it, you know, reduce waste and make it more efficient, but also get the learnings, get the feedback to, to, to help design better APIs and deliver better value um, for, for the customers, but also help the teams who build these APIs, you know, explore, you know, be innovate, you know, uh, build a uh, uh, Try new technologies, not hold them back, you know, not be the bottleneck, uh, bottleneck, right, to API innovation. So for me, that's what API Ops is about. Wow, that's. Uh, I hope you have notes in front of you because if I could ever rattle off a list of a life cycle that cleanly, I would just give myself a huge pat on the back. Uh, but that's awesome. Um, the part I really would love to dig into is that first bit is when you say that you know, let's talk about. What is the value this API brings? Um, what is that like? Kind of how do you approach that sort of thing? Uh, in mm-hmm. a, I think one in terms of you know what's the shape of the discussion or kind of the tools that you're throwing at that, as yeah. well as how do you make that scale across an organization and defining value in you know common ways? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for us at 10x. Um, in fact, before I come to that, I, I'd say that question is really a, it's a, it's like a product design question because there's, you know, these days people would throw around the, the term, you know, API as a product, uh, approaching APIs as a product or managing APIs as a product. And it all starts with that, right? It's, it's like, what's the value? What's the value proposition of this product to the market? Okay. Um, what's the product promise to the, to the market? And, um, and a lot of it starts with that why question, right? And for us at 10X, one of the ways we do this, we have a product development uh, framework we call uh, 6321. Uh, it's a very interesting name, and we're going to let's call that, right? Um, but the it's about it has about four stages, and the first stage is where we we start with a problem definition, where we we try to define what's the problem, you know, what's the what's the problem statement here, uh, what what problem are, what problems are customers facing, uh, how is this same problem being solved in the market? across different you know providers um, uh, what, what's the key value uh, that that a solution to this would look like uh, so we start with that um, problem problem definition um, and we also you know we're even incorporating more and more things like uh, you know jobs to be the jobs to be done framework and using that to think about the jobs what's the job that the customer is trying to fulfill and what are the various ways they could fulfill that job right so that's all trying to define that's all trying to define the why the problem making sure everyone understands it and we run a few workshops we call them um you know, we can have a, like a problem workshop, if you like, where we really explain these things uh, and and really produce artifacts from this to make sure that everyone involved understand what's the problem being solved and, and why. OK, that's the like step one. OK, and then from there, we, we come then to the uh, where we then dive lower when we accept that this is a problem that we want to solve. We go to, OK, what does a solution like of, for this look like? OK, and then we go into more kind of high level solution design. And, and from that, we, we produce a few artifacts which we uh, get, uh, you know, whether that customer journeys through or, or service uh, d- service design diagrams where we go through and make sure that we understand what, a, you know, what a, a good high level solution looks like. And from there, I think that's where the API side now comes, comes up, right? Because when you're building a platform, your API is obviously your interface to your platform. So we need to understand how the, the API interface fits into those service journeys, right? Uh, so I think that's from where at that point we start talking about APIs, both at a high level, and then we can go on to further stages of the framework where we, we go into more detail on what the, uh, you know, the API activities and what exact steps or, or um, you know, endpoints and so on are, are required. But that, that's our general approach. So in that first section where you try to discover the problem, right, define the problem, define what a solution could look like, who is in the room for these discussions? Who do you bring yeah. together? 
Good. So it's, uh, we, our product managers uh, kind of lead that. We have our product managers who, who go out, uh, who talk to our clients, um, but they, it involves a lot, a lot of people, right? It involves because um, it, it, it involves uh, different stakeholders, but we have, you know, principal engineers who are involved. But a lot, a lot of it is talking to the client, understanding the problem. So uh, whoever it is, with, with whoever um, it is on the side of our client we're talking to, but also going out into the market, you know, understanding how, so there's a lot of market research there to understand how is this problem being solved in the market? What do other providers do, right? Um, and, and defining that, that, that kind of job, yeah. So perhaps this sounds naive, but, and, and this is certainly flavored by my own perspective, but everything that you listed off, let's define the problem, uh, you know, what's the job being done, high level solution, these sorts of things. Isn't that true with any product? Exactly. And I guess the, the follow-up to that is, how does that sort of process look any different because you know that the product is going to be an API? Yeah. I, I think, I, like, in, like, from my experience, I think that's been one of the challenges of APIs because people treat APIs as if they're not a product, right? And and it's this whole technology. It's just, you know, it's just, just an interface. It's just a technology interface. And so, and so it's kind of um, left for the technology function. But I think it should be led by the, you know, I, I don't think that's right. I think it should be led by product because we should apply all these good product management principles to the API, understand the value, understand, you know, the product roadmap, or, you know, clearly define the product. Uh, and then from there, we start talking about, you know, what's the interface that this product should have, okay? And I think that's where the, the API bit of it then comes out from that, right? Like like making sure we understand the the, the you know, the interface, uh, and then um, obviously designing that interface. So going to our, you know, product design, uh, sorry, API design methodology and all those things. But then we can also prototype that interface because that's the power of APIs. Like, you know, with, with the, the powerful API specifications we have, you know, Open API and the GraphQL specification and other specifications that we can actually design those spe specs, try them out with the consumers, get their feedback really on. We don't need to build the API. And I think that's the power of this, which, um, I think it would be really good to see uh, lots of teams do this because, you know, sometimes we talk a lot about API design first, um, but it's good to actually see like how many teams actually engage the consumers and other stakeholders with those with those uh, specifications, with those API designs and actually get real consumer feedback from them to help improve the API, right? Because that's one of the big benefits of API design first, isn't it? So, um, so that's, I think, where where the you know APIs we, with APIs we can prototype quickly we can get good feedback we can uh, iterate quickly to improve that design um, and then uh, yeah really that's that's yeah as I've said on here more than once um, you know when people go what do I do to manage you know manage an API as a product you go a little old school product management never hurts is a good place to start <laughs> yeah, right yeah. <laughs> like, uh, th those principles should be completely applicable. Um, you know, the stakeholder being a developer doesn't really matter that much until you start getting into that interface design. Mm -hmm. But I'm totally with you that, like, uh, know the problem you're solving, know the job that you're doing for uh, the end user. Um, one thought, though, is that I, I would always found that the biggest struggle when you get into that kind of design phase, okay, now we understand what it is that we're going to go build, let's design something. What do we call it? Uh, are, are you sort of looking at that sort of product homework phase, uh, what did you call it? Like, I don't know, the value definition, um, that you're doing anything there to sort of gather up what, uh, how we might approach naming this stuff, because that seems to be where, you know, the war starts when you get engineering and product and yeah. business people together. And it's like, everybody has a different acronym and the customer doesn't know any of them. And marketing mm -hmm. wants something snappy all oh, the time, totally. right? Yeah. You want a good pop yeah. to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, it's 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 a it's an actually it's an interesting one, and I think it's a difficult problem as well. Um, it's, it's not it's an easy one, but I I think that um, um, where this stuff starts, right? I think is that uh, there's a lot of tools that we have there that can help it. I, I really like um, one of the first things is uh, really helping to define a, a, an API profile. I think that really helps. Where you say right, if if this is in terms, you know, if this is an API, um, 
what are the capabilities at, the, at a really high level now? What are the business capabilities we want to expose in this API, right? Um, what are the what's what's the general technology we want to use? Is this a REST API? Is this a you know GraphQL API? Is this a, a, a gRPC API? Whatever. Um, so you mean so, so then you mean technology capabilities, not necessarily business capabilities. Sorry, the word capabilities can mean a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. So at this point, I'm thinking of um, business capabilities, right? Um, okay. So you know, so for us, for example, we um, we need to, we need to you know. For example, we need to onboard a customer on our platform, things like that, right? Um, so business capabilities. And then, you know, at a high level, thinking about things like usage scenarios um, of, of the API, is this roughly what kind of traffic or limiting, uh, you know, traffic traffic limits and things like that will get on the API. Um, so that there's so, so a few high level things that we need to define in the API. But having done that, I think that as Generally, as part of software development, we start, there's, you know, there's this whole concept of domain-driven design, of being able to model your problem, understand the key, uh, the problem domain, um, understand the, 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 the domain objects that are involved in that problem domain. Uh, and this is around the ubiquitous language that everybody should be talking about, whether it's engineers or product or marketing, those domain terms, those domain objects that uh, define the ubiquitous language that contribute to software solving the problem, okay? So that kind of um, domain approach, which, you know, uh, you know, Eric Evans talks about in his book, and the discussion that happens, the, no the churning, the knowledge, you know, this, uh, churning uh, that, that happens to, to flesh out the, that, um, that ubiquitous language, I think that then feeds into the API as, uh, as the resource models, okay? So based on once that starts happening, it's easier then to, to start thinking of resource models, which will be you know, exposing the API specifications that are based off of those uh, domain models, those domain boundaries, uh, those uh, you know, context, th those domain contexts. I, I think that helps, that helps bring out a better API design solution. Yeah, I, I, so I, I think for product people listening, which I hope we get some of those, right, uh, since that's kind of the subject du jour, is uh, I think a lot of product managers struggle with how to kind of do that aspect of design up front and uh, to sort of uh, grapple with this reusability thing, right, and not just falling into the trap of building a one-off API for this particular use case that doesn't yeah. fit into a bigger picture. So you... I mean, do you, do you find in these engagements that it's kind of a partnership with sort of engineering and product to find what that model should look like? Absolutely. You know, collaboration is key. Is absolutely key. And one one of the things, uh, in fact, we're adopting in my in my in my organization in my company is um, I like a lot uh, James Higginbotham's um, ADDR method. I think James has been on this episode as well uh, when he talked about um, uh, yeah he's been on one of these episodes. So so James has this um, uh, align, define, design, refine API design method, right? And one of the things about that method is is I like very much it stands the align stage is really about the why, you know, so defining the why, defining the job, right? And then there's the there's the define stage, and then we're at that point we're looking at okay, what are the, uh, how can you break those 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 um, you know, high level jobs into into activities uh, and maybe lower level activities. And then who are the stakeholders involved, right? And then what are the resources? And I think that when product and engineering get you know, get around defining those jobs uh, and then going to that defined stage. This is where that collaboration really comes in because we're defining those resources together. And of course, a lot of discussion will happen and it should, right? And we should be ready for the, the fuzziness, the lack of clarity at this stage because things are still being refined, things are still being, we're putting things together. So there's going to be a lot of discussions and it should, more stakeholders and more people should be involved at this stage because what one of the things we want to pr um, produce is really, I, I like really like the idea of documenting a resource model as an artifact for this and however we do it you know i love i love markdown i love doing this in markdown in git because i love putting all my api assets in one repository in git that's what i do but you know some people could use you know word documents or they may have other complicated software they use that's fine but as long as we document these resources someplace where we can actually play it back to other people in the org and say what do you think of this resource model does this make sense and it's really good to hear people say no 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 that doesn't make sense right because that's really what and so the next question is why and that's really what brings up that kind of you know that that knowledge 
uh, churning, that, that discussion that happens to, to really flesh out a solid, uh, a, a more solid resource model. That's the basis for future extension of the API and future gr growth, right? Because when you have a great resource, when you have a great resource model, you can easily extend the API. You can easily serve other business, uh, you know, provide other business capabilities um, uh, and, um, you know, satisfy other business needs from that. But when we lack that resource model, uh, it's a, it's a problem because, you know, things get really <laughs> disjointed. People find it difficult to communicate. The language is different. It's really hard to extend. And like, oh, I forgot this other use case. And, you know, so, so I think that's where problems can, can come in. Do you think there's ever a chance of too many cooks in the kitchen? Um, good question. And uh, I, I think that... Um, that yeah, th th there could be. But I, one thing I like is like in my organization, we have principal engineers, right? And these principal engineers look after domains, uh, domains mm -hmm. in our product. And they are really, um, you know, we, we use them as really engineering authorities to, 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 so they help interface with all the different people who should be involved in, in, in fleshing out that domain, right? And and they are the go-to people who say, you know, this is this is what the model should be like. This is what the and I find it so it's so important, especially in my role as an API product owner, to to reach out to them, right? And whenever there's a this kind of resource or domain model, should we use this? Should we call it this or should we call it this? But this is a key resource. What do we call it? I find it so useful to reach out to them because they know how to, you know, draw the lines together and connect the dots and say, have you spoken to this or have you considered this solution here and, and really help us um, uh, make, uh, you know, a, a, uh, a really good model. So they are people who I see can shepherd, are really good at shepherding a good, a coherent solution, good coherent uh, model that helps API design. And filter out all the unnecessary opinions mm -hmm. that come exactly. in along the way, right? Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd only add the caveat that sometimes when you're working with, insert title here, whoever that guardian <laughs> of the domain is, um, that sometimes there's an implementation focus that cannot be the most customer-centric way of describing mm -hmm. it and sometimes mm -hmm. needs some translation. But yeah. I totally agree that that's that, uh, that's that partnership between product and, and engineering. Um, so uh, I guess back to your API ops kind of flow. So. We talked there about kind of value definition, the beginnings of this design process. And then I guess from there, we're kind of going build, test, publish, support, all these other things. Um, you know, what, what does that kind of next phase look like for you once we've got sort of a design coming together? Yeah, so designs coming together, you know, we have an API specification. Obviously, there's a build, there's a build uh, phase coming from that to actually, you know, build a relevant microservice or, or, or services, and then, uh, you know, exposing that through some some gateway. Um, but I think one one key thing to, to that always comes up, right, with APIs is how how can you check what's built actually matches the specification that you you spent a lot of time agreeing and discussing and designing, right? And and I think that's where, um, you know, we have lots of great tools that help to, to, that help um solve that problem um, and we're looking to actually we're doing lots of work on you know in my company to 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 incorporate those tools um so so you know things like you know obviously um we have a a, a prism from from stoplight as well is a, is a good one to, to that that just helps check that look the implementation actually matches the agreed schema um and and it does it in quite a nice way i like because it's quite thin just sits like a proxy and helps you do that easy validation without a lot of heavy lifting so i really like that kind of pattern um, so those those tools, those tools help, um, and then after building it, there's obviously you know exposing it via you know via via, via the gateway, uh, you know testing it, doing all the doing all the relevant testing, whether that's functional testing and other things, exposing it via via the gateway so that we you know the, the consumer can use. But the other thing I also want to mention is documentation. Because documentation, I think it's, it's so important. It's as important as the API design, right? And especially in my organization, we are moving that as left as possible. We're trying to get um, some of the doc documentation really early on, you know, if possible, even at the API design stage. Because some of the documentation we need to write is like, this is how to integrate with the API. You know, this is, this is these are the steps you need to do, or this is, you know, to, to, to use this API endpoint. Um, these are the steps you need to do to integrate with this. These are some preconditions you should have met. Uh, uh, you know, these are some examples. And it's really good, I think, to... Um, to, to try and get some of that stuff really early on because it really 
affects the design as well. And I like my colleague, one of my colleagues put it this way. He was like, um, a lot of times the people who build the APIs are not the people who use the APIs, right? And, and, and actually the step of trying to document that API, right? Some sort of, you know, API guide, integration guide or functional documentation, whatever you call it, actually helps the people building it get a better feel of what it is like to use it, okay? So yeah, getting a bit of that early on, I think helps, helps a lot, right, for better design. Yeah, it's it's funny. Uh, by the way, unprompted plug for Prism there. Uh, we, as any listener knows regularly, we don't uh, don't ask for the plugs. But uh, I will say, for you know, it's open source stuff, and I think uh, QA folks that discover Prism suddenly realize it's it is a solved problem, as much as people think it's like an impossible thing to figure out. So definitely worth checking out. Um, on the docs thing, though. Um, I think one, it's like to the product managers, it's it's kind of most people have heard of this notion of like write the press release before you build the thing, uh, kind of the Amazon methodology. Yeah. I think there's some aspect of that here um, that is like uh, if you're forced to think through how you would describe what it does and roughly how you use it, you've already ticked those value boxes yeah. pretty heavily mm -hmm. um, and uh, quite often in order to see if any of that's possible – you have to have someone from the engineering side read that and go, yeah, I think we can do that. Or yeah. are you nuts? Right. Uh, so in, I, I think in a lot of ways that it can be a unifying force early on to just hub around two paragraphs. What does it do? And roughly how do you use it? Uh, and if you have some kind of spec to go with it that you can mock against, awesome. Like you're leveling up. Right. Uh, but I completely wholeheartedly agree. And the only last bit I would add is, this is kind of stoplight perspective here a little bit, but we talk to a lot of people who come in and say, hey, we're going to use you for documentation. Cool. Like API docs are great. Where are you at, you know, in your process? And they go, well, we're just getting ready to launch this thing and it's time to document it. <laughs> and like, it's very clear what's going to happen, right? This is not going to go well. This is, these are not going to be happy people. They're not going to have a good day. Mm. But when they go, well, we're, we're starting to kind of design our platform and we're thinking about how we're going to scale up designing all these d different APIs, we go, there we go. Th these folks are going to succeed, right? That's who we're going to mm. uh, you know, really focus our time and energy on uh, because they're doing it right. So we see that evidence very clearly that tacking docs on the end of a development process is just disaster in the making and the customer experience that comes out the backside of it is not on the same level. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, granted, we'll, we'll help them as best we can, but I'm just saying like the notional evidence is pretty strong for yeah, what, totally what, what, what you're suggesting. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. I mean, yeah. Can add to that. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you mentioned support and, uh, yeah. you know, so far we've been largely talking about a lot of engineering ish stuff that happens mm. between when some product homework got done and when we're getting ready to kind of take this thing out the door and there's some tech writers and other maker types involved, but support's a whole different animal mm. and API support. I, f I feel like maybe the next frontier beyond API product management of how to do API support because I don't know that very many organizations have any idea. So I'm curious, you know, do you have any secret sauce for us here? Because I certainly haven't yeah. seen a lot of successful stories. It's, it's an interesting one. In my, actually, in my, uh, actually, my previous role, um, where I was a uh, uh, kind of uh, what we call developer experience team lead at, uh, at a, uh, at a London-based consult fintech consultancy. Um, I, will, I actually hadn't handled a lot of support um, tickets coming in uh, for our for the APIs we are building in, and I had the uh, pleasure of, of 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 you know <laughs> being the one to first respond, read through the tickets, and first respond to them. And I think the feedback was just. Um, it was great. <laughs> it was great. Like, like it, like. It, it really focused me on what we needed to do, right? Like it, you, you exposed to the pain that the consumers were getting and uh, it really focused me on what we needed to do first and what we needed to do next, right? Like to, to lower the pain um, for the for the consumer. And, and this comes back to, you know, at the beginning I was talking about, about API ops and, and first about flow, but also about feedback, right? Which is like the second principle is like, how can you, get and build in as many feedback loops into this value stream, into this product, this API product development value stream as much as possible. How can you get um, all, the, all, the, all the value stream 
um, or, or the feedback to the people who need to get the feedback, right? To the to the to the engineers building, uh, designing the the APIs, but also maintaining and running the APIs in in production, right? Um, how how can we do that? Um, and and I think that. Um, Obviously, getting getting the uh, you know the engineering team to 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 respond to those support uh, tickets is is a great one, right? Because they they, they get the feedback um, straight off, but also um, but also planning the work to actually do those fixes, right? In a in a quickly moving in a, a rapidly growing organization, there's always a lot more to do than there are resources to do it like every time, right? And um, and so there's there's like a there's always like a this is a quick fix that fixes the problem. But then, then this is the, uh, you know, the strategic fix or the strategic solution on, on how to do it, uh, on on how to, uh, you know, solve this properly. Um, but it's it's always always also, especially for me in my role as an API product owner, to 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 think about what are the systemic, you know, what are the system level issues applying systems thinking here that would actually stop this problem from coming up in the first place, right? You know, it's great to fix a problem, but how can you make sure it doesn't even come up? Like, what can you change in your API design process? What can you change in your product discovery process, you know, to make sure that you don't even have this problem in the in the first place, right? Um, and so and so those are the kind of things I, um, I, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about and, and playing with solutions, you know, playing with trying out new things to make sure that, um, that that those kind of things uh, um, don't don't happen. The 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 other thing which I'll quickly mention on as well is like I really think, and this is one of the things I'm I'm really putting a lot of um, work into myself, trying to put a lot of work and resources into, is really to really start capturing metrics around um, those API related defects and how you you know categorize them. Is it just a documentation defect? Um, is it is it a you know or is it like a, an API or, or some other defect or the API is actually failing in production and and gathering all those metrics in a place that it's visible um, for the relevant people to see it. You know because part of this just making it's making some of this stuff visible. Okay, it is 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 a good start, right? To to solving the problem. So so making sure we're building in uh, enough. Um, uh, I, I know it's, we we a lot we use the term observ observability to talk about the actual running software uh, and getting metrics on the software. But but what about uh, other things that are very specific to, to 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 the APIs and making sure they are good and, and making those th that information those metrics available to to the people who can make sure you know they're fixed and we don't have those problems again. So really interested in, in those, yeah. Yeah, and not just locked behind a support ticket software, right? Where it's mm. gated to only the support yeah. team members being able to see it, uh, surfacing it is absolutely crucial. Yeah. Well, it kind of—I feel like we uh, we ran the whole gamut here, man. We ran through the whole life cycle, and uh, I'm kind of—I uh, I think you win the prize because we always end up going down one particular rabbit hole. But we actually went kind of end to end on—I uh, mean, we skipped deprecate, but it's just sad. So let's not do that today. <laughs> uh, but when you kind of reflect on, you know, this kind of life cycle, this API ops, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, for some listeners who maybe aren't doing many of these things today and they might be a little overwhelmed, like that's a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. Um, what do you think is, you know, your first priority? Where would you get started if you give someone kind of a recommendation on, hey, if you're not doing any of these things, what's the most important thing to get going first? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jason. Uh, for me, it will be, um, <laughs> for me, it will be to listen, actually. Just, just listen, right? Um, so when I joined my role at, at 10X, um, one of the things I did was just just listen in on the uh, on 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 my teams, just stand ups, uh, listen to what the pains were, what the constraints are, um, listen to the story refinement meetings, uh, have one on ones with people, catch up and say what what problems do you see, what problems do you want most solved, right? Um, and I, you know, get into our API guilds and API guilds, uh, you know, our internal API community of practice is a great way to listen to what pains other people are facing, right, relating to API. So so just listen to see um, what what are the challenges people have, okay? Uh, and listen across listen across. We used to have design standards meetings where we create design standards. Again, I'll just 
listen and try and find out um, where are the pains? Okay, um, because I find that's a good place to start, right? Like, like solving the solving the the most crucial pain um, that 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 actually buys us time and and and, and capacity to tackle the bigger things, right? Um, so so I, I like I like um, I just like listening and documenting those things, um, and then and then. I, I, that, that's almost like an internal problem definition, if you like, right? Uh, capturing those things and then and then discussing about okay, how can we approach these things? Because once we know like this is the biggest problem and this is the second, this is the third, that's already defined like a roadmap, if you like, or like a kind of a priority list. And basically walking through walking through those because you know there are there are loads of great tools out there, loads of great books, um, lots of this stuff is, is there, right? Uh, but sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming if you don't know where to start. And part of part of knowing where to start is just it's just for me it's listening and discovering what the biggest problems are and attacking those ones first. Yeah. I really occasionally have the thought we should get a T-shirt for the API Intersection podcast that just says empathy across the front, hmm. uh, right? This is the, the same thing we hear. You want to do developer experience, you got to have an empathetic approach. you got to be a decent listener yeah. and, uh, and, and solve what hurts yeah. uh, because sometimes it's not as predictable as it seems. And all the other process stuff, you can just add on as you go. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, I, I love the message of empathy. It's, oh. it's a thing we hear over and over again on here. So. Well, I, that feels like a great place to wrap. Uh, really appreciate this. Again, a uh, tremendous amount of knowledge. And uh, I think, you know, uh, again, you're our people. You're in our wheelhouse. <laughs> so you're welcome <laughs> back anytime. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Anna. It's been great being here. Thanks for listening. If you have a question you want to ask, Look in the description of whichever platform you're viewing or listening on, and there should be a link there so you can go submit a question, and we'll do our best to find out the right answer for you.